I'm Carol Angela Davis. Thank you for joining me for your reality news chat. Today is Friday. It's the 9th of December, 2011. We're going to begin with your headline talking about the payroll tax cut. I'll explain that to you. Watch out. Yeah. Also, Newt Gingrich's gay half-sister, well, uh, we'll tell you what she says. Also, the band Corn. yeah, sometimes it's best to just say nothing. Also today, Toyota, bad news there. And then John Corzine, well, he says that he doesn't know, know where the money is, billion of dollars. Let's just talk about that. And then Jerry Sandusky's wife, well, she's another one that needs to just be quiet. And then finally, the Russians are at it again, this time with Twitter. Okay, let's begin with your stories. We're going to start uh, with the payroll tax cut. Expect a vote next week to expend the, extend the payroll tax cut and unemployment benefits. The problem is that the extension on the Republican side is still tied to a Republican plan to, of course, ease the path for approval of that Keystone XL oil pipeline that goes from Canada to the United States. Because, after all, isn't that what we need more of, more reliance on oil? We need to pipe more, more oil in because, guess what, folks, we're going to be relying more on oil. Uh, okay, and plus, what, what's another few oil billionaires? I mean, don't we need more of them? After all, they are helping the country immensely, aren't they? Well, Senate Republicans have already stopped the Democratic proposal to extend the payroll tax cut because it included a surtax, of course, on income over a million dollars to help pay for the lower payroll tax rate. Apparently, Speaker John Boehner, Republican from Ohio, telling a closed-door meeting of GOP members that he's ready to fight for his right not to impose any taxes on the rich. Thanks, John. We actually, we get that message by now. Why is this issue important to every American? Here's why. I want to explain the payroll tax cut to you. <clears throat> it came about during the stimulus package last year, and it gave working Americans a, a holiday, a reprieve, if you will, on the paying all of the payroll tax. Now, the payroll tax is about 6.2% of your paycheck. It funds Social Security and lots of other things. So we got the one-year holiday thanks to the stimulus package so that we're now, for the last year, we've only been paying 4.2% out of our paycheck for that payroll tax. Um, and that, folks, is worth about $1,000 a year to you in your paycheck, all right? 160 million working Americans are affected by this, and it applies to the first $106,000 of your income. So it really helps people who are making $106,000 a year or less, okay? That would be middle income and poor people. Well, Obama wants this payroll tax cut extended <clears throat> because he says... We can pay for it. He says the way that we should pay for it is to put a 2% surtax on millionaires and also by rolling back tax breaks on the oil industry, the very people who want to build that pipeline. Uh, that would be, of course, as you know, and you know what's going on with the oil industry, okay? <clears throat> They're going to make enormous sums on any new oil pipeline, so we better watch them. Republicans... Uh, of course, do not want to tax the rich. They say we cannot afford uh, the, uh, to cut the payroll tax. He says we are not taxing the rich under any circumstances because they say, why should we tax the rich? The rich are too busy creating all those jobs that either don't exist, never exist, just won't exist, or simply disappeared, okay? And remember I mentioned unemployment benefits. Well, the same bill also extends the nation's unemployment. So if the tax cut is not extended, then 5 million people will be impacted by not having their unemployment benefits. Now, uh, Congress has until the end of the year to make this happen. So if I were you, I'd be curtailing my Christmas shopping until I find out if I'm going to get that money, okay? See if they can figure that out. Without, since they won't tax the rich, let the rich shop. Trust me, they don't buy enough. They don't buy enough to keep this economy going. They don't need the 1% that buy enough. It's the 99% that do all the buying to keep the economy growing. So just stop shopping. They'll figure it out. <clears throat> Let's turn to the race for the presidency 2012. Well, the plot thickens. The gay half-sister of Republican presidential hopeful Newt Gingrich says this, vote Obama. Yeah, that's what she says. Candace Gingrich-Jones, she's a gay rights activist. She says she and her older half-brother, Newt, they disagree on gay rights. And specifically, Candace says this. Uh, he is definitely on the wrong side of history when it comes to those issues, she says. And she adds that she will, quote, work really, really hard uh, to make sure that President Obama is re-elected next year, no matter who the Republican candidate is. Candace says Gingrich, Newt Gingrich votes, didn't even come to her wedding. Can you believe that? Her own half-brother, okay? Newt, be careful. Makes people think you should be neutered, metaphorically speaking, of course. All right, let's move on because then there's that has-been band corn. You remember them. You might 
I should say, remember them, okay? That metal band that rose to fame in the 1990s. Well, frontman Jonathan Davis says this, quote, I feel like Obama's an Illuminati puppet. He's basically dragged this country down to the worst it's ever been. Like I say about the White House, you've built this house of shame. This man does not read the newspapers. Everybody looked up at the White House in America, and now I think it's like a house of shame, says Miguel Osama bin Laden. I guess that's what he's talking about. He goes on to say, I miss the old days when people were proud to be an American. I bet you do miss the old days, don't you? Interesting, since in a 2006 interview, Davis said this, quote, Corn has never been a political band, unquote. Yeah. Well, maybe they're trying to make a comeback, and we know that in America, if you say something really stupid and outrageous, you might get in the press, which he is in the press, and maybe he'll be able to make a comeback and make a little cash, okay? Let's turn to sports, where former Penn State football coach Jerry Sandusky's wife, Dottie, has the nerve to be angry, folks. Yes, she is. She is mad. She says she's mad, okay? She says accusations of child sexual abuse occurring in her home are, quote, absolutely untrue, folks. That's what she says. She says, quote, no child who ever visited our home was ever found to stay in our basement and fed, that was forced to stay in our basement. Let me repeat that, I'm sorry. Quote, no child who ever visited our home was ever forced to stay in our basement and fed there. We would never do anything to hurt them, unquote. Meanwhile, as we all know, her husband faces more than 50 charges surrounding a child sex abuse scandal that allegedly spanned more than 15 years. Daddy, be quiet. You need to be quiet. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people out here are wondering if you are an accessory, if you should be charged with the crime. Were you an accessory before the fact? Were you an accessory after the fact? Because that child said he was in that basement being sexually abused by your husband, and he yelled help, and he says you were home. So that needs to be vetted out. We need to find out if that was true. If I were you, I would just shut up until the trial. Okay? Thank you very much. All right, let's go to business news. John Corsine. Oh. The former chief executive officer of the bankrupt broker MF Global does not know where that missing $1.2 billion is, folks. Can you imagine? Oh, he doesn't know where it is. That's right. He says, uh, he said this while apologizing for his firm's failure before a House committee. He says, quote, I simply do not know where the money is or why the accounts have not been reconciled to date, unquote. Okay? Needless, he was a, he's a former senator and governor. That's scary. Needless to say, he denied wrongdoing and noted in his remarks that many people in his situation would invoke their constitutional right to remain silent, guaranteed, of course, by the Fifth Amendment. MF Global, you should now know, has the dubious distinction of being the eighth largest bankruptcy in U.S. history. Folks, there are 38,000 securities and commodities trading accounts at the firm that are now on hold. The FBI is investigating. Uh, federal authorities are probing the company. It's being investigated by the House Financial Services Committee and the Senate Agriculture Committee. Folks, I wish, I wish that I messed up some money. I could tell my bill collectors don't know where that money is. I just don't know where that money is. I'm sorry. That isn't good enough for us. It's not good enough for him. Okay? All right. Over at Toyota, Japan's largest car maker has halved its profit forecast for this year. The reason? Supply disruptions caused by Thailand's floods that halted production at factories in 10 countries. The firm lost output of 215,000 cars globally between October 10th and November 25th. Here's my question. How does Toyota, I can understand Toyota cutting its forecast for this year, 2011, but in half? Sounds like there's something else going on. This is an excuse for them to have the forecast and not have to have all the drama associated with Toyota may not be selling as many cars. And I like Toyota, but the reality is one month you're out of production, only 215,000 cars, and all of us globally, and all of a sudden you have to cut your, your forecast in half. Doesn't sound right. Finally today, from Russia with love, it seems they used hijacked PCs to jam Twitter. This is cybercrime, folks. The Twitter conversations were in the form of political protest about the Russian election. They were jammed. Uh, by spam sent by bots. That's what the security experts say. Russian activists said thousands of Twitter accounts were being used to drown out genuine dissent. According to one Russian, and I quote, social media has become the battlefield, yeah, of a new war for freedom of speech, unquote. Get ready, folks. Those are your stories. I'm Carol Angela Davis. Thank you for joining me. Today is Friday. It is the 9th of, of uh, December. Yikes, yeah, 2011. Got the year right. Thanks so, so much, folks, for joining me. I'm coming to you via Skype, as I always do. I'll see you next week. Have yourself a wonderful weekend.